from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of IBM Think 2021, the virtual edition. My name is Dave Vellante, and we're going to talk about observability, front and center for DevOps and developers. Things are really changing. We're going from monitoring and logs and metrics and just this mess. And now we're bringing in AI and machine intelligence. And with us is Pablo Barron, who's the CTO of Instana, which is an IBM company that IBM acquired in November of 2020. Pablo, great to see you. Thanks for joining us from Munich. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. So, you know, I always love to talk to founders and co-founders and try to understand sort of why they started their companies and, and congratulations on the exit. That's awesome. After you know, five, five, I'm sure <laughs> grinding, but relatively short years. Uh, why did you guys start in Stana and, and what were some of the trends that you saw and that you're seeing now in the observability space? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, the journey began uh, as we worked in the company called CodeCentric, the majority of the founders. And uh, we actually specialized in troubleshooting, uh, well, real hard customer performance problems. We used all different kinds of APM solutions for that. You know, we, we've built expertise uh, like uh, collectively maybe 300 years of the whole company. So we would go from one um, adventure into the other and see customers suffer and help them, you know, overcome this trouble. At some point, we started seeing architectures uh, coming up that were not well covered by the classic APM solutions. Like people went after this pseudo, pseudo, pseudo virtualization, all in containers, you know, just dropping random uh, workloads uh, into a container running this maybe in Kubernetes. Well, not not actually not five, six ago, but uh, years ago, but you get the point. We started with the heavy container containerization and we've seen that a classic APM solution that is heavily, you know, like machine oriented and, and uh, some of them even counted by the number of CPU, et cetera, et cetera. They're not very well suited for this. Plus, all of the workloads are so dynamic, they keep co coming and going. You cannot really, you know, place your agent there that is not adopting to change continuously. We've seen this coming and we really, we've seen the trouble that we cannot really support the customers properly. So after looking around, we just said, hey, uh, yeah, I think it's time to just implement a new one, right? So we started that adventure with the idea of a constant change with the idea of everything is containers, with the idea of everything goes towards cloud native. Uh, people just uh, run random uh, um, workloads in all different versions that are linked all together. Then this whole microservices trend came up where people would just break down their monoliths and gazillions of uh, literally very small components that could be deployed independently. Everything keeps changing all the time. The classic solution cannot keep up with that. So let me pick it up from there if I can. So it's interesting, your timing is quite amazing because as you mentioned, it really wasn't Kubernetes when you started in, in the middle part of last decade. Micro, you know, containers have been around for a long time, but Kubernetes weren't, it wasn't mainstream back then. So you had some foresight uh, and, and the market has just come right into your vision. But, but maybe talk a little bit about the way APM used to work. It was, I started to talk about this. It was metrics, it was traces, it was logs, it was make your eyes bleed type of, type of stuff. Um, and, and maybe you could talk about how, how you guys are different and how you're accommodating the rapid changes in the market today. Right, so, well, there is very, very many um, faces to this. So first of all, we always have seen that the work that you should not be doing by hand. I mean, we already said that you should not be doing this and you should be automating as much as possible. We see this everywhere in the IT industry that everything gets more and more automated. We want to automate through the whole continuous delivery cycle. Unfortunately, monitoring was the space that pro probably never was automated before Instana came into place. Mm -hmm. So our idea was, hey, just just get rid of the unnecessary work because you keep people busy with stuff they, they should not be doing, like manually watching dashboards, 
setting up agents uh, with every single software change, like adopting configuration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things can be done automatically, at, at, you know, to a very, very, very large extent. And that's what we did. We, we did this from the beginning. Everything we approach, uh, we, we, we think twice about, uh, can we automate, you know, the maximum out of it? And uh, only if we see that it's it's you know too much an effort, etc., we will we will probably not do this. But otherwise, we don't we don't uh, do this any uh, you know we can compromise. Got it. The other right, the other aspect is so this is different to the classic APM world that is typically very expert heavy. The expert comes into you know into the project and really starts configuring, etc., etc., etc. This is this is a totally different approach. The other approach is continuous change and uh, you know adapting to the continuous change container comes up you need to know what this kind of workload what, what kind of workload this thing is how it is connected to all the others and then at some point probably it's gonna it's gonna you know go through the change and get a new version etc cetera, etc cetera. you need to capture this whole life cycle without really changing your monitoring system plus if you move your workloads from the classic monolith through microservices onto Kubernetes, you're kind of transi transitioning, you know, it's a journey. And in this journey, you want to keep your business abstractions as stable as possible. The term application is nothing that you should be reconfiguring. Once you figure out what is payment in your system, this is a stable abstraction. It doesn't matter if you deliver it on containers. It doesn't matter if this is just a huge, you know, JVM that owns the whole box alone. It simply doesn't matter. So we, we decoupled everything infrastructure from everything logic. And uh, the foundation for this is what we call the dynamic graph. It's uh, technically it's pretty much a data structure. It's a regular graph data structure with, you know, connections uh, in, in, in multiple directions from different nodes. But the point is that we actually decompose the whole IT geography. This is the term I like to use because there is <laughs> there is no other. It's infrastructure, it's topology. It is, on the other hand, just, you know, same sides of the same thing. When you have a Linux process, it can be a JVM. It's just at the same time, it can be a drop wizard application. It's the same thing, but you give it different names and this different, you know, facets of this thing can be linked with everything else in a totally different way. So we're decomposing this from the beginning in the product, which allows us to, to have a very, deep and hierarchical understanding of problem when it appears. So we can nail it not down to a metric that probably doesn't make sense to any user, but really name the cause by, look, in this JVM, the drop wizard metric XYZ is misbehaving. This indicates that this particular piece of technology is broken and here's how it's broken. So there's a built-in explanation to a problem. So, um, the, cl the classic APM, as I said, it is a very expert heavy um, uh, territory. We try to automate the expert. We have this guy called Stan. This is your, you know, kind of uh, uh, virtual DevOps engineer. It has AI in there. It has some, some artificial brain. It never sleeps. It observes all of the problems. It really is an amazing guy because nobody likes him because he always t tells you what's broken. You don't need to invite them to the party and give them a raise. They're just there and observing your systems. Right? <laughs> I, I like Stan. I like Stan better than Fred. No offense to Fred, but Fred's the guy in the lab coat that I have to call every time to help me fix my problems. And what you're describing yeah. is end-to-end -end visibility or observability uh, in, in terms that, that norm, either normal people can understand or certainly Stan can understand and, and can automate. And that kind of leads right. me to this notion of, of anti-patterns. Um, and in software, we think of anti-patterns as, you know, you have software hairballs and software bloat. You've got stovepipe systems. You're a, you're a data guy by background. And so you well understand, you know, stovepipe data systems. There's organizational examples of, of, of anti-patterns like micromanagement or over analysis by paralysis, if you will. How, how do anti-patterns fit into this world of observability? What do you see? Oh, there is many. I, <laughs> I could write a whole book actually about that. Um, let, let me just list a few. So first of all, it, it is valid for any kind of automation. What you can automate, you should not be doing by hand. This is a very common entire pattern. People are just doing work by hand just because they're lazy or, you know, like 
repetitive work or there is no kind of foundation to automate that whatever the reason this is clearly an impact pattern what we what we also see in the monitoring space are very interesting things like normally since the problems in the observability and monitoring space are so hard you normally send your best people watching rats you want them to contribute to the business value rather than waste the time observing charts that like 99 percent of them are normal the other aspect of course is what we also have seen is <laughs> the other side of the spectrum where people just send total no biases into the into the problem of ops observability and let them learn on the subject which is also not a good thing because you cannot really i mean there's so many unknown unknowns for people who are not experts in this space they will not catch the problem you will go through pain right so it's not a learning project it's not a research project this is very essential to the operation of your right. business and your it and there's many examples like that right yeah, so I, I want to end by just sort of connecting the dots. So this makes a lot of sense. And if you think about, you know, Arvind Krishna said that IBM has got to win the architectural battle for hybrid cloud. And when I think of hybrid cloud, I think of on-prem connecting to public cloud, not only the IBM public cloud, but other public clouds going across clouds, going to the edge, bringing OpenShift and Kubernetes to the edge and developing new, uh, supporting new workloads. So as uh, IT is like the universe, it keeps expanding and it gets more and more and more complicated. So to your point, humans are not going to be able to solve the, the classic performance problems in the classic way. Uh, they're going to need automation. So right. it really does fit well into IBM's hybrid cloud strategy. Your, your thoughts and I'll give you a last word. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm, IBM generally is of course, uh, very far ahead in, in regards to research AI and all these things. This, this, this uh, sorry, those could be combined within Stana very, very, you know, natively, right? We we are prepared to automate using AI all of the, well, I, I would want to claim that all of the monitoring observability problems. Of course, there is manual work in some, in some you know, in some cases you simply don't know what people want to observe. So you kind of need to give them names and that's where people come in. But this is more a creative work. Like you don't want to do the stupid work with people. It doesn't, you know, it, there is no, it, it doesn't make any sense. And IBM, of course, um, acquiring Instana gets, you know, the foundation for all of the things that that used to be done by by hand, now fully automated, combined with Instana, combined with Watson AI Ops, this is this is huge. This is a like a real great story. Like the best research in the world meeting, uh, probably the best APM solution. That's great, uh, Pablo. Really appreciate you taking us through Instana and the trends in observability and what's going on at IBM. And congratulations uh, on your your success. And thanks for hanging with us with all the craziness going on at your abode. And uh, really, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante and our ongoing coverage of IBM Think 2021. You're watching theCUBE.